Austerity is a term that's used to describe a period of fiscal discipline in which governments try and significantly reduce uh, public expenditure. And the idea is that then private consumption, business investment will stimulate the economy. It's known as uh, expansionary fiscal consolidation, which to you and me really means the trickle-down effect. So if we look at the austerity strategy that the, that the government followed, I mean, first of all, the bank bailout was designed to, to protect the biggest investors, right? Um, the second point we could make is that since 2010, the richest thousand people in this country have doubled their, their wealth, right? And one of the first measures the, the government took at the same time as the first austerity cuts were rolled out in 2010 was to cut taxes for those earning 150,000 and over from 50 to, to 45%. So we certainly are not seeing the rich and the corporations paying for this austerity. Austerity is, is, is being paid for by, by those, by the majority, and particularly those, those at the bottom. So we have to say that this austerity period has actually been a, a time of extraordinary prosperity uh, for, for the rich. And we have to say that it's a class project. It's a, it's a pro project about consolidating class power uh, and about attacking those who are much weaker and more vulnerable uh, in the country. In the book, uh, we wanted to show how austerity is violent by looking at the last seven years um, of austerity. Uh, since the since austerity came into effect in, in the last seven years, we're now beginning to see the harmful and violent effects of it. When the coalition government introduced its big bang welfare reforms, we saw more than £20 billion worth of benefit cuts introduced and rolled out en masse. And since those welfare reforms have been rolled out, we've started to see the violent effects. Recently, mortality statistics released by the Department of Work and Pensions have revealed that up to 10,000 people, 10,000 disabled people, have died since uh, carrying out the work capability assessment. And the work capability assessment is where they're assessed whether they're fit to work or not. And a majority of people were assessed as being fit to work. And that caused all sorts of harms, all sorts of psychological stress. And we can see um, other similar violent effects when we look at other welfare reforms in other areas, such as the housing reforms, the housing reforms that came into place in 2013, which included the bedroom tax, included um, changes to local housing allowance, included changes to single accommodation rates, which now include up to 35-year-olds. Um, includes benefit caps and also the new controversial policy whereby the government is removing 18 to 21 year olds from housing benefits. And these housing reforms have had violent effects on the personal lives of those most affected. So we know, for example, studies have shown that households that are facing rising household debt and facing the threat of eviction and threat of homelessness those people are, are much more likely to commit suicide and to fall under the psychological stress than households or than the general population that don't have those types of stresses. We describe austerity as a form of institutional violence because austerity policies are first and foremost um, enacted and enforced through state-led institutions. Over the last seven years, we've seen um, a vast effort and resource pumped into key state institutions in order to meet their targeted austerity outcomes. Well, we were always told that we'd maxed out our credit card. That was, that was George Osborne's phrase in terms of the, the justification for austerity. Um, and if there has been a credit boom, it's been a credit boom that's, that's resulted from, from deregulatory policies. Um, and actually, you know, we have to face up to the, the fact that, that some of the poorest uh, people in, in, in our society and some of the poorest families have to use credit in order to just get by. But the real story here is that we're paying for a global financial crisis that was created uh, by, by, by governments. Governments who encouraged the accumulation of toxic debts, the, the expansion of, of derivatives and financial products that made the global system highly vulnerable, and a succession of governments, you know, not just the Conservative governments, but the last Labour governments encouraged those through deregulating and, and encouraging the City of London uh, to pursue those, those self-destructive policies. Um, and so this 
really is a myth because it's about making the poor pay for a crisis in the global economy that, in, in, that enriched the wealthy for, for years. And, and, and that's why we call it a deception. Austerity affects people very differently. People experience austerity differently by their different social categories, for example, social categories of sex, of race, ethnicity, age, disability, um, family size, geographical location. All of these areas determine the extent to which people are affected by austerity adversely. Authors in the book show how austerity also affects minority groups, in particular black people, but especially black women also. So given the targeted nature of austerity, we see austerity as a class project. We see austerity as targeting specifically low-income and marginalised groups in society. But governments won't ever admit that austerity is a targeted project. They'll say that the violent effects of austerity and the ways in which they affect the marginalised groups that we've just mentioned, they'll say that these are unintentional and unintended outcomes of austerity. But that argument just simply doesn't ring true. The UK government has been denounced several times in various uh, United Nations reports that show that austerity doesn't only discriminate against um, marginalised and key groups in society, but it further exacerbates inequality. So in the book we wanted to highlight, again, bringing these disparate areas together to show all the different groups that are targeted under austerity. We're told there's no alternative to austerity, um, and we would argue that our only option is to reverse austerity, and, and we, we make that economic case and also human case for the reversal of, of austerity. I mean, the economic case is very clear. This month, the Institute of Fiscal Studies produced a report where, where they said um, two parliaments of pain have actually had very little impact on, on levels of, of public expenditure. So the economic case really is not there to prolong this pain. And certainly the human case is, is not there. We need to end this unnecessary suffering, destruction to people's lives and, the, and, their, and their livelihoods. And we have, to, we have to also note that some um, corporations and some individuals are, are profiting hugely from this misery. And in the book we mention you know, the, the, the likes of the Atosses or the Maximus uh, organisations who are forcing people off benefits for profit and have been found to, to, to in, in Atos's case, to be doing that, that fraudulently or companies like Wonga who have grown their markets as a result of, of forcing uh, people into debt. I think, you know, one of the authors in the book says that, that, that Wonga's uh, total revenue is now three times the revenue of local credit unions. So, so there is a profiting from this violence that we have to take very seriously uh, indeed. And we also, we also want to stress this is not just about the benefit system. The dismantling of social protection is affecting people across the board in, in ways that we don't normally see, in ways that are not normally visible. So in the workplace, we're, we're, you know, we're facing uh, cuts to all of the regulatory authorities. Some local authorities don't have any protection or any inspection of, of, of workplaces now. The health and safety executive um, is, is, is facing a 60% cut in its, in its revenue uh, at some point. The Environment Agency is now ill-equipped to protect us from, from the pollution that's, that's been generated in our cities. So the dismantling of social protection is creating all kinds of violent effects that we also uh, detail in the book. <laughs>